a warmer, hotter neighborhood. Yes. And then so you started seeing, when they first announced that, is when you started seeing a lot of people were looking at horrible, burned-out houses and starting to rehab them and flip them or rehab them and hold them because there was indication that that neighborhood was going to become better. And it is a nice little neighborhood. You know, it yeah. really is. I'm not, not pleased. Anyone In the last year, it's come quite a bit. Pleased. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. But we, 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 we've had home invasions over there, too, recently, so... I didn't say it was perfect. It's, just, it's better than it was. I bought a lot of stuff over there thinking it was you know, the right move, but I guess maybe 10 years down the road. I don't know. That's the thing with you, in the real estate. You don't know where the next hot spot is. It's actually a valid point. Is If you're trying, and I get this question fairly often, people who are trying to buy the next hot spot, <clears> man, <throat> that's, that's guesswork. I, I, I can that. articulate I, several I love when it might it, be. When I'm doing my uh, workshops, hey, Alex, where, where's the next hotspot? If I knew that, I would not be up here on a Saturday <laughs> training you boneheads. I'd be buying every bit I'd of be, I could get. <laughs> what? Not, no offense, but I wouldn't be up here doing this. I'd be doing something else. So. Well, one of my great regrets, anybody outside of Pittsburgh won't understand this, but uh, Lawrenceville is a very hot <clears> neighborhood now. Um, I could have bought... Somebody tried to own or finance me 40 properties in Lawrenceville. Oh, my God. Maybe 10 years ago when they were 40000 a piece. Wow. Now they're three to 500000 a piece. You dummy. Yeah, I, I will kick myself in the ass for that for the rest of my you're, natural you're life. You ever watch Sanford and Son? Yeah. You big dummy. I did a lot. I did. Man, I know. I had a chance to buy some units over there, but nothing nothing that magnitude. Oh it's a whole God. package. Old fellow retiring. One of the... And I didn't want it. Who knew it? No, it was, who, who, who it was horrible. Known? I mean, you're a smart guy. Who would have known what's what? In, I didn't know Lawrenceville very well. I don't do much business over there. Who knew that? What caused that to become so hot? The Did hospital. You, the children's hospital. The hospital was the driver. I grew up That's in Millville it. across the river. As a kid, that was the only neighborhood I could make fun of. So one. Now hospital. I can't even close. <laughs> who, who would have thought? Right? Yeah. Who would have thought? One hospital was the driver, which makes you question things like the expansions on the hospital they're going to make now. Mercy's getting an expansion. Uptown's already kind of hot. Mm-hmm. They're going to go over the Central Hill. Is the Hill District the next neighborhood? I've been arguing for McKe- McKee's Rocks for years. It still hasn't really turned. It hasn't. And they got some sort of hub going, coming in down there where the trains are coming in and yeah, trucks. It's, a, it's like a billion dollar investment. Still, I, it hasn't really turned that neighborhood. Yeah, and I, I tell my investors, I said, well, let me ask you this. So, I don't know how many people that's going to employ. Probably not a whole lot. Maybe a couple hundred. Maybe even a thousand. Yeah. But if you... And you can get on to 65, 79. You can get anywhere to McKee Truck downtown pretty really quick. Easy. But my point is you can also get to a better neighborhood. You don't have to live in McKee Rocks just because this billion-dollar thing's going there. And I just don't see McKee Rocks as being the next hotspot. There's just not the neighborhood feel over there. It's more of an old, old um, steel mill tower, you know, that folks built their houses and wherever they could and when, you know, for as cheap as they could. Just it so they still can get hasn't to, turned. It hasn't. But you're right. If you look at geography, it's a, it should be a fantastic location. It's just not. Yep. Now, Beaver County's going through that right now. They all think the cracker plants can be the greatest thing in history. Mm-hmm. It's Bill, billions of dollars out 600 there. 600 jobs total. And that's, <laughs> wow. That's, short that's term. it. That's short-term jobs, too. That's not even long-term. That, that, and that's not counting the people they're bringing in from out of town, either. I'm, I'm from Beaver County originally. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, one of my buddies is involved a little bit with some things down there. So for me, not to get sued, I can't say too much. But <laughs> uh, it was my understanding, and this is word of mouth, that realistically this is going to keep about 100 jobs after the whole big thing. It's going to be about 100 local jobs that will stay stay here, and that's it. Wow. Um, so it's it. there's a lot of hoopla going on. And it looks great for maybe like a five-year plan. But past that five-year plan, what is there really? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's, that's where the, the professionals see it very different than the herd. So, I mean, again, you're, you're back to your team. If you were up there and knew nothing of Beaver County, if you're up there just walking down the sidewalk talking to the locals, you think you stepped into a boom town. Mm-hmm. You think that's about to become the biggest biggest opportunity of your lifetime. The reality is very different. It'll be nice, but it's not going to change a whole heck of a lot of any of those zip codes. Now, I, I'm almost 40 years old, and I've spent most of my life in Beaver County. Here's one thing I will say about Beaver County. It thinks it's little Hollywood, so everything's always better in Beaver <laughs> County, when really it's just, it's it's a suburb of Allegheny County, guys. I mean, it's you're on the outskirts, guys. Settle down, Beaver County. Um, my wife's from Brighton Township. I'm still going to quote you tonight. Please do. <laughs> I'm from Hopewell, so show up. <laughs> I wanted to talk a little bit about um, networking and continued 
continue our discussion about who we can add to our team. Before you do that, may I j- jump in real quick? Yeah. I just want to do a quick reset. Uh, guys, in case you're wondering, this is the Deacon Hoover Radio Network. Uh, I'm Adam. I'm Ghost on this one. I'm, I'm kind of staying out of this one. I'm listening to two experts talk today. We got the Deacon of Real Estate, Alex Deacon, with us as always. Uh, and joining us today, we have Josh Caldwell, the man. Just known as yeah. The Man. Josh, The uh, Man, Caldwell. And these two brilliant minds are sitting here uh, talking all about real estate investing, um, what you need to know, what's great to have on your team. I'm just sitting back and taking it all in like you guys are. Gentlemen, continue. Absolutely. Okay, so Josh, I consider him to be an expert on networking and marketing. Just You're very good at it. I gotta give you that. Those are definitely you're not very good at too many things, but you're that's, good at the network. I'm sure, my, I'm sure your wife would agree. <laughs> So Josh is the uh, he's, he heads the RIA group in this Western PA. Um, he's probably dealt a lot with wholesalers, and I'm gonna let him jump in there and explain to our 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 listeners why it's important to be friendly with wholesalers and why they can be a huge asset to you as an investor. You want to get to know as many wholesalers as humanly possible, and you want them to know what it is that you buy. Um, you want to be on their lists. Because what a wholesaler is, is a wholesaler is the simplest form of real estate investor where they go out and they find something they can buy at price A and sell it at price B as long as B is a bigger number. That's their entire business in a nutshell. So they're always looking for deals. So why do you have to bother? For the most part, you can just turn them loose. It's like your own sales force. It doesn't yeah. cost you anything. Exactly. They're, yeah. they're a, a 100% commission-based sales force. Turn them loose. If they find something you want to buy, they make money. It's a very simple proposition. You just describe what it is you're looking for, and they put it in front of you where you can give it the thumbs up or the thumbs down. How many of those people do you want working for you for free? And I'll look at everything. I will look at, uh, there are wholesalers that do a lot of flips, and a lot of folks may look at them like skeptical, like, well, why do they want to sell this? And I'll tell you why. In a lot of cases, they want to sell because they know it's a piece of crap. But that's where your due diligence comes in. That's up to you to, to find the good deals. You can't blame the wholesaler for bringing them to you. But that wholesaler may have 10 flips going on, and they can only handle eight. So they have two potentially good properties that they can make a nice chunk of money on, and I don't care what they make. A lot of folks get caught up into the idea of, well, you're making $50,000 on this, and you just basically got it under contract. Well, what do you care if you can turn around and make $40,000, even if you have to do all the work and rehab it? Who cares? So don't get caught up in that game of, well, you're making more money than I am. If I can make money on a deal, I'm going to buy it. If I can't, thanks for bringing it to me. Keep bringing them. Yeah, what, what the other person gets in the deal is irrelevant. What I get in the deal matters. If the deal's good enough for me, it, I don't care in the slightest bit what the other guy got out of it. I hope they did well. Yeah, don't get caught up in that. Greed kills, speed kills, so just chill. <laughs> That's my little rap version there. Always okay. coming with the rhymes. So work with wholesalers. So, so the pros are of working with wholesalers, more deals in your pipeline, you network. Um, you get to build relationships with these wholesalers. I've actually built some really good friendships with wholesalers and partnered up with them on deals. You know, Because sometimes one and one doesn't equal two. One and one equals a multiple of that, you know, one to one equals ten or twenty, because a deal that they can maybe make five or six thousand dollars on a quick wholesale, if they team up with me with my resources and money and maybe my knowledge and my expertise in a certain area, we can collectively make fifty thousand dollars. So we can make twenty five thousand each or whatever our split is, but they can make a whole lot more than five. So that's that's another way to think about wholesalers is part of your sales force, but also potential partners. I'll give you a deal that I'm working on right now, and I can't disclose too much of the details on this because I've signed non-disclosure agreements. It's the biggest deal of my life. Um, I had a wholesaler bring a $15 million deal to me. I'm looking to buy it at 25. I believe I can make $50 million on a single transaction. Sweet. If I can find somebody up the food chain who wants it for me. Yeah, Josh won't be coming to our podcast after this. You know, it's a chain of wholesaling. But these people, I met them because they were buying a property that I was also. They're out of state. I'm their contact in this part of the plan. Goes back to where you don't know where your next deal is going to come from. It'd be the homeless guy on the street that you're giving $5 to, to Josh Caldwell, 
my new best friend. I was going to say, well, I'm shoveling that bottom <laughs> lip up off the floor now, and I'm trying to... Well, the fun Josh part is one, my that. new best the, the friend. The deal we met on would never happen. They didn't buy it. They just We just talked long enough to you know, create an affinity, yeah. and that that's really what it is, is you just talk to anybody that you're talking to, buying or selling, is becomes a future networking link for you. And I think that's one thing, and I... I I'm a novice at this guy, so I'm, you know, but correct me, please correct me if I'm wrong, but, oh, you know, Oh, we will. Yeah, and we you will, do. We will, you, Adam. You do, yes. Thank yes. you, sir. Um, Remember, but, we just allowed you to go from grunting and nodding to speaking. So I was allowed. We have no problem in telling you to, you know, you're, you're completely out of Sometimes, and then I'll get grounded again. <laughs> Thanks, Dad. <laughs> no, uh, but, <laughs> I completely lost where I was going with that. Good, you guys. Yeah, where, 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 where were you going with that? <laughs> I, I had a good question, but now it's, it's Am gone. I going to have to put you back on Probably. grunting I'm and nodding? Jeez. I'll just ask you a good question quickly. Yeah, yeah. Before yeah. it evaporates. All right, what are the cons of working with wholesalers? The only con I could possibly come up with is some of the deals won't be great and you'll waste 30 seconds looking at them. That's the key, wasting 30 seconds. That's I, I've it. looked at about five this week, never left this office. Because all five of them were in... Actually, I looked at one. I went out and looked at one. Because it was marginal. The rest weren't even close to marginal. So if you do your research, you know your market, um, you could save a whole lot of time by doing a desktop analysis, which that's a whole that's a whole, it's like, a whole you know, other course there. It, it really is. But so important because we, we all, I, I teach about only having 168 hours in a week. We all have the equal amount, whether you're a billionaire or, a, or you're myself or somebody who has virtually nothing, you have the same amount of time. So uh, relishing that time is, is super critical. Who else can we have on our team, Josh? Come on. Oh, good grief. I invited you here for a reason. I, I, I can come up with lots and lots of them. Um, man, where do I even want to go with this direction? I, let me give you a, I, I kind of alluded to both of them earlier, but let me give you a couple of my favorite lead feeds. Um, I love the police. Mm. The police know where problems are happening. The popo. Uh, if you talk to the police and tell them, hey, could you let me know anytime you show up at a domestic dispute? You get a landlord who gets into a fist fight in the front lawn with a tenant. You get a landlord who would like to sell a property. Um, magistrates are the same thing. Or if you just had a tenant get arrested and yanked out of a property, you've got an unexpected vacancy. That landlord might be interested in selling. Um, if you've had a drug bust in that property, you can almost guarantee that landlord wants to sell. So you're taking us to the minutia, right? Our t- team members are anybody who's living and breathing. Almost, yeah. Essentially. Hey, post, postal workers, I loved, the last one was, I stopped them on the street in Bright, Bright Heights, mm-hmm. and at the time I was looking for vacant property. I love vacant property, because I can buy vacant property for $100 and sell it for 5000 and nobody bats an eye. Um, and he gave me, I think it was 18 properties off the top of his head on his postal route. Wow. Just as I stood there with a notebook, just in the middle of the sidewalk, just yeah. jotting them down like a crazy Invaluable. person. Invaluable. That, that's what I actually wanted to interject real quick, Josh. Is the one thing that I'm picking up, and guys, please correct me if I'm wrong, is that it sounds like like it's imperative market yourself, market yourself, network, network, network. Always, be, you know, like uh, like in Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross was always always be closing the ABCs. Very true. This is always not, like always be networking, always be let people know. Hey, guys, this is what I do. Yeah. Be proud of what I do. Be boisterous about you know. Wear yeah, you, here's. I'll say this. I was a, I was an introvert. I still think I am an introvert. To be honest with you. I started as a mechanic, and you just basically it's you in the car. And when I got into this business and started, you know, reading books, taking courses, working with other agents who are good, you realize that every person has to be good at marketing. Whether you're a dentist, because if you're the best dentist on the planet and nobody knows where you are or who you are, you're not going to make any money. McDonald's does not have the best food, but is McDonald's the most lucrative restaurant chain in the on the planet yes because they're good at marketing they don't make the best food so a lot of real estate agents a lot of attorneys a lot of whatever plumbers electricians not necessarily are they the best they're just best at marketing themselves so that's critical that's why I, i'm friends with josh and that's why i like to be around him because he whenever you're around someone who knows a lot more about a certain topic than you do, you're going to just automatically learn from them. 
I'll get, so I'll Josh, get. thank you so much for being my friend. Yeah. And if that fifteen million dollar <laughs> deal comes through, I'm. <laughs> You'll never see me again. We're buddies. <laughs> On a side note, Cyprus is the only nation on the planet that won't extradite you anywhere except Turkey. Um, so as long as Turkey doesn't want you, you can move to Cyprus and never be seen again, just in case you're ever looking. <laughs>